Hey there gang, thought we might have a quick look at uh, Battle for Stalingrad and walk through a couple of little bit, a couple of little bits. A few small things, a smooth, <laughs> I had a long day today and I am tired, so I've been driving for six hours, so I think that is right on my brain. Let's try again. I thought we might look at a few small things from Battle for Stalingrad, the John Hill title that was republished by, I think it's Excalibur. And I'm brand new to this system. We've just done, <coughs> excuse me, game turn prep, unit facing air markers and general replacements and air power and bombardments and things like that. And now we're looking at uh, operations. And uh, in the opening turn, these stars represent where units must be placed or a unit must be placed by the Soviets. And then other than that, you have relatively free setup. So what the Germans decided to do was to bombard a couple of hexes here and this one here, we were also trying to get this guy here and try and blow a hole here. And the, my thinking was that I could perhaps pocket this little section of units here, right? And you know, I'm gonna just go adjust this camera while we, while we're here. Brr. Get down a little bit closer to the action. Less glare. <clears throat> so, I'm trying to be as faithful as I can to the rules as, as usual, uh, which means sometimes you do things over and sometimes you make mistakes. But I think the way this works is like so. Uh, you move a unit and then, uh, except for when it's a militia unit, when you move adjacent, you have to declare whether or not you're going to attempt an overrun or attempt a, an assault. And if you don't, then the opposing player has an opportunity to uh, pull a chit for a instant counterattack. But you don't do those with militia units. You only do them w with other units. So <clears throat> we very carefully moved uh, forces in adjacent to militia units and I placed zones of control around this entire set of forces here thinking that like I was saying that we could maybe try and isolate these guys. And the reason why we would like to try and put them out of supply or uh, isolate them is that it negatively impacts their ability to fight back. Uh, when you do, when you conduct a combat, you uh, go through uh, a certain set of steps, and the first step is, well, one of the first steps is uh, defensive fire. So before you even get to attack, the Soviets are going to be firing at you, and they're going to roll a die, and whatever the result they get out of that, that's going to be subtracted from your combat, and then you're going to have your combat. So being out of supply reduces the value of that or adds two to the die roll. That's right, adds two to the die roll. So <clears throat> the other interesting thing about being isolated though is, or out of supply, is that militia units are immediately eliminated. So what this does is knocks out these three units. So I move these forces one at a time. There are no zones of control for uh, militia units either. And so we can just toddle past here they can't counterattack or anything like that. They don't have that ability to do instant counterattacks. So the first thing we're learning is this is a really dumb place to put militia units when you set up to play this game. So the next time we play, we'll find an alternative location for militia units, that's for sure. Uh, I was thinking they'd be worse off on the line here and just be a big red target if we put them somewhere uh, on the line. But uh, clearly, this is not a good location. So, uh, so all these guys are going to go off the board because they they don't have a, a path back to a supply source. And in fact, I've also got these guys here out of supply as well because they don't have a path back either. Because oh, actually, maybe they do because we've got this unit here. So, what I would need to do to get these guys out of supply or place these guys out of supply, I should say. With this division, now we know what we're going to do. We're going to attack here. If I attack here, we can put this dude out of supply. And that'll be uh, all these dudes out of supply. And that'll be awesome. That's going to really help me kind of clean this little section up. And then we can advance on Stalingrad proper. Uh, so it's going to take me uh, the 60th, uh, 60th motorized and 389th infantry division to do that. So the only real two, two real attacks we have this turn, uh, this, this operational phase, is this guy, which is one of the, you know, the last or second last unit I move. And... And we'll run through that real quickly here, right? All 
Okay, so I paused it for a sec there because I wanted to zoom in. So here's, here's what you do with a, with a, a combat. This is an artillery unit. And uh, I'm a little unclear on the combat factors and, and things like that, but my understanding is we use this first combat factor, the eight, to uh, resolve this defensive fire. And I roll the four, and four plus two is six, which means uh, on an eight, uh, a combat factor, we're not going to get a result. There will be no losses for this attack. So that's a good thing. Let me just double check that. Eight. Oh, uh, actually, uh, six would be one step loss. Or do we reduce them by half? Now, here I am thinking... Yeah, isolation is when uh, ferries, etc. capacity is reduced to zero. And supply is, uh, is different. Oh no, here we go. If the unit is out of supply, fire strength is halved and may not be moved, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, that is, so it's going to be a four. That's why I thought there was no loss. So four plus two, four strength on the, on the four column, and I roll the four, and we add two to it to six, there's no effect. So this guy, this guy skate, they don't take any losses. And so uh, for that, now these guys are going to attack, and they have 10... 11 combat strength and I roll a 2 for them for their die roll 11 that's 3 units okay so that guy's dead right and <clears throat> I don't recall anything about advance after combat that's right we have breakthrough points and we'll deal with breakthrough points in another video because before I, I wrap this little video up I just want to resolve this last combat here these guys are not out of supply and this will give you a, a feel for the difference in, in combat uh, and how much uh, damage can be done here so it's a combat strength of 2 a roll of 3 uh, oh, that's just out. Okay, so it's that's a miss. So they're not going to have any any effect. Uh, we have six. These guys are in the open, so we have six combat factors. Seven combat factors. Sorry, coming at them. I roll three. Seven combat factors. I roll the three. That's going to be one. So that's one dead. <laughs> the dead pile up very quickly in this game, and I'll show you what I mean by that. Um, so there's the two additional units. All those guys there are results of the artillery barrages, and I don't know where the German. Uh, and these are, and I lost these three units for the Germans in the very first turn. That's three, uh, three companies. The first little section of the first turn. So pretty bloody. All right. So that was an operation for one division. We've moved these guys. I've got to do breakthrough points. Let's make a note there on that one and on that one. And we'll come back and deal with that at some other, other time in the exploration of the game. And I just thought I'd share that with you later on.